at some point in your life, I'm pretty sure your parents or your grandparents sat you down and told you how back in the day they used to be able to live on their own, go to college, get their you know, first job, save up, get a house, all of this, yada, 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 and basically live a financially successful life. Times are a lot different, and I just want to share my perspective of the mistakes that I made when I first moved out of my parents' house. Uh, I don't believe that you can do the exact same thing that your parents did in the exact order and make the exact same money that they did in today's time, even if you adjusted it for inflation and have the same type of financial success. So I'm gonna share the mistakes that I made and what I've done to recover from them and basically offer a way for you to completely avoid the mistakes that I did when I first moved out of my parents' house. And it's a really popular topic, a lot of kids, you know, 18, 19, 20, they want to move out of their parents' house. And it's easy to not consider a lot of things just like I did when you're moving out. And what this video is gonna offer you is some strategy and some methods on how to avoid certain mistakes so you can be as financially successful as possible once you move out of your parents' house. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. I'm here to help you make the best financial decisions possible and live your best life. So we're gonna get into this right now. So the first mistake I made when it came to moving out of my parents' house, i.e. graduating from college and then moving out right after, literally right after graduation, was that I didn't take the time to actually learn about personal finances and learn about how to get good with money and all that stuff. I didn't really learn about debt or interest rates or investments or savings account or what type of savings accounts there were. There's so much when it comes to personal finances that it's kind of hard to just graduate, live on your own, and then balance that with, with a full-time job and with resting because you're not used to working all those hours per week. And then also if, if you're dating someone, if you have like a girlfriend or a boyfriend, like <laughs> dating on the side and having somewhat of a life, like it's kind of hard to balance and it can get very stressful. So I wish I would have like at least taken a year, like even if it was taking my senior year of college just to month by month learn a little bit. Like I didn't even do that. I was just like, yeah, so uh, I'm going to have a good degree, so I'm going to have a good job, so I'm going to make good money. So I didn't even consider the fact that I might need to actually manage that money. God forbid, right? Oh, you're making money now? Now you have to manage it. Did not even occur to me, um, just being perfectly honest with you. I've always been somewhat um, solid with money, and I've always been like, well, I'm not going to overspend, but like, I didn't really know the in-depth stuff, like debt payoff methods. I didn't know about that. I didn't know about having a saving account in an emergency fund that was a completely foreign like idea to me. I didn't know about how to make your money grow. I, I just, I was kind of lost just like most people are when they first graduate. And these are just things that you don't learn in school. And should things be different? Absolutely. Things should be different. There should be certain things that are taught in school that just don't get taught. But a lot of these things are our responsibility to learn outside of school, unfortunately, right now. And now that we have this opportunity, we should take the most out of that opportunity because we know it exists. We know personal finances exist, but it's just, I personally didn't take the time to learn about that. And as a result, I had to work and I had to fight an uphill battle while I was working to learn that stuff. And, you know, eventually it paid off because I didn't stop or back off of it, but that was the first mistake I made. Another mistake I made was because of the first mistake. So because I made the first mistake of not learning as much as I could about personal finances, I didn't really learn about the cost of living. And the cost of living, if you don't know what that means, it's when you live in a certain area, how much it costs to live in that area in relation to how much you make at work. For example, if you live in New York and you make $100,000 a year, that's completely different than making 100,000 a year in a place like say North Carolina completely different cost of living. In other words, if you make that kind of money in North Carolina, it's gonna buy you a lot more than it would buy you in New York. Why? Because rent is a lot higher in New York. If you own a car in New York, you're gonna be paying for more than just the car and the monthly payment and the registration and all that stuff. You're also gonna to have to pay for parking. Whereas in North Carolina, there's not so much of that. Parking for the most part is free. Groceries, gas, these things are going to differ in price depending on where you live. I didn't do that. Now, I still lived in a relatively low cost of living area, but with the amount of money that I was making, I really could have leveraged that and had a much cheaper price to pay for my rent every single month. 
but I did not take advantage of that. And as a result, I missed out on saving some money. And it might have been like an extra $150 to $200 a month because I moved into a townhouse which had two bedrooms. I'm one person. I could have just got a single bedroom apartment and saved me some money. Now, in retrospect, it might not seem like that's a lot, but you never know. I mean, for a lot of people, an extra 150, 200 bucks a month is something that's going to help them feel like they can be above water. They can actually start building a savings based off of that. And I, I wish I could have at the time because I was really at, at a dark place at that time where I felt like my job wasn't cutting it. I felt like even though I was making good money at my job, I felt like I was being mistreated. I felt like I wanted to walk out every single freaking day that I worked there. I felt like I could lose my job at any moment because people there, they, they just don't treat their people right. They'll look at you a certain way. They'll cuss you out. They'll tell you about yourself or what their opinion is of you or whatever. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. That type of thing. I don't know why I hired you. That type of thing. Like basically making you feel like you're worthless. And as a result, when, when that's what you're going to work to and, and, you know, when you work every single day of the week, literally every single day of the week, it's very difficult to go back home feeling secure financially. So that's something that would have helped me out as well. So definitely assess the, co the cost of living, look at how much money you're gonna be making per year, and then look at how much it's gonna cost for you to live. And when you look at the amount of money you make per year, look at how much it's gonna be after taxes, not before, after taxes. Just because your boss tells you, yeah, you're gonna be making 50 grand a year, does not mean you're making 50 grand a year. You have to break it down between after taxes. It's probably gonna be more like 42,500 a year. Why is that important? Because now that chops off $7,500 per year that you're not gonna be getting. So it's gonna be in your best interest to look at that stuff. Number three, not learning as much about the real world as I could. And this one's kind of a tricky one because no one is really open about the real world. Like you probably grew up hearing your parents say something to the effect of, yeah, it's hard now. The real world is hard. Just you wait. All this studying you're doing now, even if, no matter if you're in high school, college, grad school, medical school, it doesn't matter. Like whatever level you're at, you've probably heard this. Yeah. All that studying you're doing now is going to be a lot different when it comes to the real world, but no one ever explained it. But playing devil's advocate, I didn't really ask either. Like I was never really, I never really poked the bear too much on that. I was just like, okay, well, how is it hard? You'll see when you're older. I could have questioned them a little more on that, but like, no, like, I wanna know what's hard about it. What have you experienced as an adult that was difficult that made the real world seem hard for you? Like, is the real world really that hard? Like, if you make the money that you need to make to afford all your bills, is it really that hard? I just thought it was all mon monetary related, but it's, it's really not. I wish I would have learned a lot more about that. I really wish I would have learned about how corporate dynamics work. I wish I would have learned about how no one really gives a crap about you. There's going to be a select few people who do, don't get me wrong, but for the most part, no one's really going to care about you. There's going to be a lot of people that you can't trust that try to make it seem like you can trust them and then go behind your back and do things that can uh, that can destroy everything that you're trying to build. I mean, it's happened to me before. They've tried. They did not succeed. But yeah, you have to understand how unforgiving this world can be. And I wish I would have learned that a little sooner. It would have made me build tougher skin a lot quicker. I've always been fairly tough skinned, but there's always that one thing in life that can get you because you might be tough one moment, but what if, you know, your girlfriend breaks up with you? Now you're a little softer than you would have been if you weren't going through that breakup. What if you get demoted? What if your best friend stops talking to you and doesn't want anything to do with you? There's going to be something in your life that you're not seeing coming that's going to happen to you and you're going to feel like a victim and you're not going to know how to deal with that situation right in that moment. Then you have to deal with life on top of that. I, would, I wish I would have understood that these things that are going to happen inevitably aren't necessarily happening to me. They're just happening and it's not always because of you. It's, it could be because of them, or it could just be a circumstance like a freak accident or something that happens in your life. Either way, there's something that can happen and you still are responsible for everything. Nothing has changed. You're still responsible for your bills. You're still responsible for coming to work every single day. You're still responsible for being an adult and operating as such, despite what's going on in your life. There's going to be days where you might feel like you need a moment away from society, away from civilization, just in the dark, in your house, you know, in your corner, in your bedroom, whatever it is for you. And you have to really sit and process those thoughts. And that's why mental health is so important. Like it's looked at as like a joke 
But mental health is important for everybody, men and women. So you really have to manage that and understand that life is difficult. And anytime things are good, you have to cherish those moments and put yourself in a position where you can prolong those good times as much as possible. For example, you're making good money right now. Cherish that. Make sure you're saving a good amount of that money. If you have money that's extra, Put some of it into an investment if you can and if you know enough about investing. Do your own research. I'm never going to say just throw your money into random investments. Do your research. If you don't want to do that, and that's how I was at first, if, if you want to make extra money in a business venture, I opened up a small drumline business where I taught people how to get onto the drumline. Invest a little money now, make a lot of money later. That's how I look at it. But that's those are ways that you can cherish your money. Because if you just spend your money freely now, you're like, oh, I'm making all this money. I'm going to buy that chain. I'm going to buy that watch. I'm going to buy all these things that I want. I'm going to buy that game console. I'm going to buy that TV. I'm going to buy that furniture that I don't need. I'm going to upgrade my car. I'm going to upgrade my apartment. I'm going to upgrade my whole life. I'm going to go out to eat at a fancy restaurant every single day. Maybe that's extreme. Every single weekend. Like you have to think about that stuff. Can you afford to do that? Because when... When COVID hit, nobody was expecting it, and a lot of people were not prepared. I want you to be prepared because life is going to happen regardless. It may not be in the form of a pandemic, but it's going to be in the form of something, and you've got to be ready. It could be financially. It could be in a relationship. It can be spiritually. It could be mentally, physically. You're going to go through something in life at some point, and you're going to need to be prepared for it. That's all I'm saying. I wish I would have known that a lot earlier. Number four. I wish I would have been more intentional about saving at first because there's all these unforeseen expenses. Like I felt like since my car was paid for, I was kind of laxed on a lot of things. Like, yeah, sure, my car was paid for, but I didn't realize that I would have to pay a security deposit for my townhouse. I didn't know I was going to have to pay an application fee for my townhouse. I didn't know that I was going to have to have a certain amount of money ready to already pay for my first month of rent. Sure, it was prorated, which just means that some of it was deducted because I moved like halfway in through the month, so I only had to have half my rent for that month. And then literally 15 days later, I had to have a full month of rent. So I wasn't prepared. I didn't have like that kind of money prepared. Thank God some of my family was able to help me out with that. But it just goes to show like you, if you want to do adult things and you want to say that you're grown, you have to be able to think ahead and plan ahead. Which leads me to my next mistake. Overall, I didn't really have like a financial plan going into it. Like I knew that the only financial plan I had was how much money I wanted to make. I knew I wanted to at least make over $55,000 when I got my first job and preferably $60,000, which I was able to do. But that was all I had. Like I knew I wanted to make $60,000. I was like, okay, cool. Now I want to make $80,000 and then $100,000 and then keep going up from there, right? But like... Outside of that, I didn't really have a plan for how I was going to do it outside of get promoted. Yeah, that's great. But like, what's your plan to get promoted, dude? Like, I didn't think about these types of things. I didn't think about how I was going to keep my costs down and, and save up. Because like, what's the point of making all that money, but you're not saving none of it? You're not being useful with any of it? Sure, you're going to enjoy some of it. But what's the point of making all that money if you're in the same category as everybody else, no matter how much money they're making? Like, it, to me, it doesn't make sense. So I've always thought like, if you're going to make a certain amount of money, you better have something to show for it. You better have some savings. I just didn't have a plan to get there. So I was on the right track of thinking. I just didn't have a plan. And so I didn't develop my plan until like a year in to, you know, living alone and working full time. I was like, man, I need to develop another stream of income. Man, I need to make more money at work this way. Oh, I can do overtime. That was back when overtime was actually a choice for me. <laughs> Because eventually it became an everyday thing. But, you know, once you start thinking of little ways you can make more money and, and ways that you can improve how much you save. And it goes back to the first one, learning more about personal finances. I would have been a lot better off in the future and I would have felt a lot more financially secure. And I wouldn't have had these like little what if thoughts. like, Man, what if this doesn't work out and I have to move back in with mom? That was a scary thought because my pride was attached to that thought. My ego was attached to that thought. And I guess that ended up working, you know, in my favor because when you do live by yourself, you put more, there's more pressure on you to perform. There's more pressure on you to succeed. You don't want to have to go back. You don't want to be, you know, even though your parents might not think of you any differently, like you're going to think of yourself differently. You might actually lose some respect for yourself. And that's a scary thought on its own because then you start doing things that aren't like you 
And I just don't even want to think about that. But anyways, I think I've given you enough to think about. Those were my mistakes. That was what I wish I would have known. I've learned an incredible amount since I've been an adult. And especially as a man, I really take all five of these mistakes to heart. But it applies to any adult out there. That's just how it is. That's how the world works. You can't really do the same things that your parents were able to do. And all this other stuff still applies, but it was probably stuff that they just didn't tell you. Like, they probably didn't think to tell you. They probably felt like you have to, you know, take your own path and you might not go through the same things they went through. But these are at least examples of what could possibly happen in your life. That's why I gave like a pretty wide array of things that could happen. But anyway, I'm going to let you think on this video. Hope you took notes. Rewatch this video as many times as you need to. And make sure you subscribe to this channel for more financial tips and more tips for moving out and stuff like that because I got you. That is what I'm here for. I'm here to coach and mentor you through the things that are not so clear in life when it comes to money and when it comes to everything else. So anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.